Hi guys, so on this channel, I'm usually covering things that people want me to talk about, things that are popular at the moment, or I'm recommending things that I think more people should check out. Today, I am doing the latter. I am recommending something I think people should check out. Today, we are talking about Strange Darling. This is an indie film that just came out recently. Uh, Red Letter Media just covered it. They just beat me to it. So unfortunately, I, I can't be the, the big first proponent of this movie, but I saw it over the weekend and I absolutely loved it. So I really wanna talk about it. I want to give a spoiler-free recommendation, what I liked, what I didn't like. And then really, I want the bulk of this video to be a post-game discussion. So for those of you who have seen the movie and are dying for sort of an in-depth discussion about its themes, what it's trying to say, potential controversies, that's what we're going to get into in the back end of this video. So the plot of Strange Darling is actually quite straightforward, but the order it is told in makes it quite kind of interesting and twisty and turny. So essentially the whole movie is just a cat and mouse game between a serial killer and their victim. The two lead characters are a guy and a girl. They aren't given names in the movie other than little monikers. And the film opens with like a Texas Chainsaw style sort of like voiceover where it's saying like the following film you're about to see, uh, the last couple days of a serial killer's run. This is the story of the most prolific serial killer of the 21st century. And from there, you are seeing a woman being chased by a man with a gun. And the movie kind of tells their story out of order until you find how these two met, what went down between these two, and why they're both trying to either escape each other or kill each other. It's very, very interesting. The film, looks, the film looks visually stunning in a very obnoxious manner. The film actually announces at the start that it was shot on 35 millimeter. Like in the intro of the film, in giant kind of blood-like red text, it says this film was shot in 35 millimeter. And it's like, all right, cool flex, whatever. But the film visually is stunning. The sound design is great. I am a sucker for really good sound and the, the music here is brutal. Gunshots are loud. Cars are scary. 21st century. Uh, the main woman is excellent here as well. Willa Fitzgerald. Uh, she's fantastic. She completely steals every scene she is in. She gives me like Hayley Williams vibes from Paramore, but she was actually in Fall of the House of Usher. She was the sister of the guy that owned the House of Usher. She's excellent here. Um, unfortunately, I can't really get too into kind of plot details and character details without giving the whole thrill of this movie away. But if you're into serial killers, if you're into thrillers, if you're into sort of like a cat and mouse, I think you'll really like this movie. And especially as information is revealed to you in a really satisfying way and you start to get a full picture of what went down between these two. For them to get to this point, the film really kind of comes into its own. And I really appreciate a film that does what it says on the tin. I went to the this film wanting a straight up straightforward thriller and I got it. It is one of the few movies I have seen in recent memory where it was like 90 or 100 minutes and it actually felt snappy. You know, so many movies lately, just the pacing is just strange and off and it feels overly long, longer than they usually are. But uh, this movie just like fucking flies by. And I think a lot of that is because of the way it is told out of order. So you start at the action and then you'll get some backstory and then you'll cut back to the action and then some backstory story and the film also for the most part has really really good dialogue I, I found a lot of the dialogue in this film really compelling really engaging there are one or two scenes that I thought were a bit funnily written felt a bit simple felt a bit Disney almost but I think as you find out certain things about the characters, you realize that might have actually been the point. Minus one scene, which we will get into in our spoiler section. This film has a lot to say about gender expectations, uh, gendered violence, roles in these sort of like power imbalances. And I think in regards to the gender stuff, that's where the film gets really kind of complicated. And that's why I want to talk about the discourse and the reception of this film. However, I found the stuff it was exploring sexually really quite interesting. The movie very intentionally is exploring the relationship between sex and violence and the way that is manipulated. Uh, there was genuinely part of me that suspected that maybe this whole movie was just two people like engaging in like a really intense role play due to certain things that are set up earlier in the movie. And I really kind of admired the way the film doesn't give you super easy answers about certain character things. So now in order to talk about this movie anymore, we do need to talk about spoilers. So 
the big kind of reveal, the big twist of this movie is due to your kind of like preconceptions of who is usually a serial killer, due to the fact that the movie opens with a guy running around with a gun, chasing after a woman, you are kind of led to believe that the serial killer that the film builds up in its opening title crawl is the guy. And about 30 minutes, 45 minutes in, it becomes pretty clear until it's actually confirmed that the serial killer of the movie is this woman played by Willa Fitzgerald. And she actually seemingly goes on kind of like one night stands, picks up men and then murders them. And in this instance, the man has actually escaped. And not only has he escaped, but he's also a cop. He has guns, he has resources, and he is coming to get her because this is the serial killer that the police force have been trying to find. So that is your true cat and mouse. The film really holds it off for quite some time. The film explicitly frames him as violent and dangerous in multiple instances. There is a scene in the movie before he finds out she's a serial killer where he is choking her consensually. However, the script hasn't revealed to you that that is consensual and part of a sex act that she has approved. So obviously when you see it initially, it looks like he's murdering her. And when they introduce that scene again, it still feels like he's murdering her until she starts laughing, says the safe word, and then goes, that was fucking awesome. That is so good. So the most interesting part of this movie for me are the conversations between Willa Fitzgerald's character and Carmen's character in regards to sort of like gendered violence, how dangerous one night stands are, what they want to do in the bedroom, etc. I think the movie does a really good job of kind of like murking and muddying the waters in terms of what is an act and what isn't. You can't really tell, you know, when our two lead characters meet up for their one night stand and they're discussing, you know, what's tonight going to look like? What are we going to get up to in the bedroom? Uh, the film really kind of holds this conversation for a long time. And I think it's really interesting because for her, this is going to eventually be a murder, right? This is an attempted murder but for him he really does feel like he's going for like a one night stand and he's pushing his sexual boundaries to please her he isn't normally into this really violent sadistic sort of bdsm sort of stuff and i think it's interesting because yes on the surface maybe the easy read of this movie is she's violent she's a serial killer so therefore she likes violent things in bed but as the movie went on and the movie kind of played with how much sympathy and empathy and understanding you have for her I found that maybe in a twisted way, she almost asked these men to do these violent acts to her. So her fight or flight is activated and she can see these men as violent, make it easier to kill them. We don't really get a massive backstory to Willa Fitzgerald's character. I've seen a lot of people kind of critique this. But for me, that was the most interesting part of the movie. It was the lack of closure as to why she actually kills these men, why she has sex with them, whether it's because she wants to almost like get them to be violent, get them all riled up, get them in this state where they feel like actual physical threats to her so then she can take the power back there's an early discussion she's having with carl's character where she outlines like you know a woman takes a bunch of risks when she goes out on a one night stand you know you could be a serial killer you might murder me and this was the scene that initially to me felt a bit disnified it's not that i disagree with what she's saying but it just felt like really surreal that a woman would meet up with someone who she sees as potentially dangerous and outline this to him. It just felt very movie-like is the best way I can explain it. Obviously, these are thoughts that women have. These are thoughts that people have on one night stands, but it felt weird to meet up with someone and then basically say, hey, I just want you to confirm that you're not a serial killer. And he's sitting there. At this point, we think he's the murderer, right? It, it hasn't been revealed to us that she is the serial killer and he is in fact the victim. But he then responds going like, I've never seen it that way. So initially my read was, oh, of course he sees it that way because he is a murderer, right? He goes around killing women. What a manipulative piece of shit. But obviously looking back on that scene, looking back at the weird stilted dialogue and how kind of shoehorn that felt, it's actually quite interesting. It feels like Willa Fitzgerald's character given the fact that she's the serial killer, not him, right? She's the one going around killing men on one night stands. It feels like she's almost trying to paint herself 
as a victim in his eyes and get him to submit to her, get him to give in and relinquish his power and really be cautious of the vibe he's giving off and how he carries himself so she can really catch him off guard, you know, very like Black Widow spider sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. And I found that conversation interesting. Initially, yeah, it felt really silly and simplified and like this feels like baby's first feminist ideas, but that very much feels intentionally the point when you find out that, yeah, she's the serial killer. This isn't her first rodeo and she frequently goes on one night stands and kills men. It's also established about Willa Fitzgerald's character later that she sees demons and that's why she kills people sometimes. And I, I, I do wonder if... Part of this BDSM, part of this like riling up these guys and drugging them and getting them to be really violent and, you know, domineering in bed is so she can kind of eventually like have these moments where she sees them as demons and justify their murder in her own twisted brain. I just, I found her character really interesting. And again, I've seen the criticism that she's too paper thin, but that thinness actually made her really kind of interesting and intoxicating because I feel like on rewatch, you'll get a better read into who she is as a character. I think it's also important to mention that at multiple points in the movie, she goes out of her way not to kill women. Yes, she does murder one woman at the kind of hotel at one certain point. But aside from that, she really tries to let women go, whether it's the female cop, whether it's the woman she steals the car from. It's al it's almost like if it's almost like if they pass her test in terms of morals and how they treat other women, she'll let them go. So the fact that this woman lends her her car, she lets this woman go. She also lets the female cop go because the female cop initially sees our main character, the main woman played by Willa Fitzgerald as a victim rather than suspecting that she is the serial killer. To me, to me, it almost feels like she lets women go that feel like girls go. She lets allies go. Interpretation of Willa Fitzgerald's characters in terms of her motivations is that she fully believes that men are inherently predatory and women are often victims of violent, dangerous men. And whether it's because she's backed this up with real world statistics, whether it's because she's been in these situations herself in romantic relationships and eventually she snapped or whether she was hurt as a child, it feels like almost this thing of like every man eventually has to fulfill that. She feels that eventually they will fulfill that. You know, to me, it feels like men are either violent and awful to her. And if not, she's gonna make sure that eventually happens to justify killing them and righting the wrong of the world. You know, to me, it feels like the film's focus on this foreplay, on this really violent sex is because it wants to get across the idea that she needs to put herself back in that victim mentality before killing these men so it can feel somewhat justified, somewhat as this weird, twisted, he made me do it self-defense. Now, let's talk about the sort of gender politics of the movie because you're probably hearing me explain this movie and starting to feel like, ah, is this movie trying to say that women fake, you know, awful situations? Is this movie trying to say that like sometimes men could be victims too and oversimplifying the Me Too era and the victimization of women? And I think unfortunately this movie probably would have been better coming out 10, 20 years ago. I think if this movie came out 20 years ago, we would simply just look at it as, oh, what a surprise. The serial killer in this film is a woman rather than a man and it tricked us. Nice. But I think post Me Too, post this increased discussion about gendered violence and how common it is, I think this movie inherently feels a little more complicated. So as much as I just want to enjoy this film as a simple thriller, it really depends on what the filmmaker was going for here. It is a really neat subversion and a really neat twist that the main guy ends up being the victim rather than the serial killer. It's a really exciting reveal. And our main lead actress here is genuinely excellent. But there's a scene towards the end of the movie that jumps out to me. It's that scene I mentioned before with the cop. So in the back end of the movie, right, she's chained to a refrigerator and the cop is calling up back up and he's like, we're gonna take you in for you know being this serial killer, being the electric lady. She eventually gets the jump on him, bites his neck. The cop dies. Our main character is dead. She then makes it look like he was about to assault her. And that's when the backup cops show up. So that's all the context you need, right? In this sequence, there is a conversation that's had between the two cops. One cop happens to be male and one cop happens to be female. And basically the discussion they have 
is the male cop is being super like by the books and rational and logical and going, hey, maybe this isn't quite what it looks like. We need to be careful. Let's not touch anything. There's a chance that, you know, this isn't just a straightforward case. You know, I, I, I can't imagine this cop would have done this. Whereas the female cop basically goes, oh my God, you're such a victim blamer. We need to take her to the hospital to get a kit done. I can't believe you're even entertaining the idea that she isn't a victim. And then he goes, hey, like, no, we actually need to do the right thing. And she goes, are you not taking my opinion seriously because I have a vagina? And I just felt like this was like the one scene where the movie kind of lost some of my good faith. Previously, I was willing to defend this movie as just purely a fun thrill ride that maybe is going to have a complicated reception post the Me Too era and post the increased discussion around gendered violence. But now it feels like the film is actually trying to make a point. You know, to me, it almost felt like the film was going out of its way to be like, you know what, men can be victims too. And sometimes, you know, women are actually evil. So should we really believe all women? Because look what happens if we believe all women. And it's like, I don't know. It just felt a bit simple and a bit less nuanced than the rest of the movie. I was just a bit like, even, even if I agree or disagree, I'm happy to disagree with a film. But I was just a bit like, ah... What are we going with here? And if you're going for an interesting discussion about that, I feel like it needed better writing and more fleshed out ideas, in my opinion. Again, I'm happy to watch a movie where the serial killer happens to be a woman. You know, I'm happy to see her get shot or try to get away with it by using the Me Too movement in her favor, manipulating the good faith that was built into that movement. I think that's really interesting. But this was the one moment in the film where I felt like it was really kind of going for a strange message. And I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I'm reading into it too much, but I think it's interesting because, and it's interesting because I read a review on Letterboxd where the closing paragraph read as follows. But instead, it feels like it was written by someone whose immediate reaction to a woman speaking up about being assaulted is to remind people that she could be lying and the R-wordist is innocent until proven guilty. To clarify, I'm not saying that J.T. Molnar, the director, is that type of person. I'm just saying that's the impression his screenplay gives off, whether intentional or not. And here's the thing. I love this movie. I think this movie is fantastic as a straightforward thriller. When I read that review, I can't exactly disagree with their interpretation. I get how they would have come to that conclusion because this scene specifically... Feels like rather than trying to have fun, be great aspirations, have fun with a female serial killer story, it feels like in this scene, it does feel like the movie's really going for like innocent until proven guilty. You know, be careful with the Me Too movement, be careful with the post Me Too world. It's just a bit strange. And I think the scene itself needed more time. And it's strange because I feel like prior to that in this movie, it actually had really interesting discussions about consent. The whole BDSM sex games that Carl Gullner and the main character, the serial killer, play together and engage in, there's actually a really good demonstration and discussion around consent, despite the fact that she ends up being a serial killer. And there are really interesting nuanced discussions about women's safety throughout the movie. It actually feels like this movie almost is straddling the line that Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 straddle, where it's simultaneously showing women in peril, women being, you know, abused and in violent situations, but also walking the fine line of being empowering and exploring these angles in a surprisingly subversive way. And this scene with the cops just felt like it kind of fumbled that a bit, but I think it just needed more time. But the reason I can't absolutely ding the movie for this and the reason I'm still recommending this movie is because the ending almost fixes that, in my opinion. So the ending, right? You have seen this woman be an absolute monster. Very intentionally so. They framed our main character as kind of like this, this post Me Too victim, right? Like we saw him as a villain because he was a man. There was very simple messaging throughout this movie. It's done a really good job of painting her as just a ruthless killer. But at the end of the movie, and Red Letter Media talked about this too, but this is a thought I had while watching the movie. She is almost framed as like a pit bull. She's almost framed as the, this creature that acted out in these violent ways in this weird 
kind of mangled, mutilated idea of self-defense and warped ideologies and like a broken childhood potentially. And I think it's it's really, really fascinating the way this movie ends. So the movie ends, right? She's been on this murder spree. She's killed a couple of cops. She's let one escape and she hitches a ride from a woman. And at this point, our main character, the serial killer lady, has three guns stashed away under her jacket. So at a certain point, you see her reach for a gun and the woman that has offered her a lift shoots first and actually eventually kills the woman. So she shoots her first and the closing moments of this film are basically our main character bleeding out. And it goes for like three or four minutes. It's an unbroken take of her like kind of convulsing and the life draining from her face, draining from her eyes as the color of the actual film itself drains you know it goes from color to black and white as she passes away and i found what the movie pulled off here pretty much redeemed the clunky writing of that earlier scene because here it feels like the film is kind of trying to make a point and i'm not sure exactly what the point is but it, it builds some empathy in a weird way we have seen her just be awful and relentless and cruel and kill multiple people and it has felt like throughout the movie the film has had almost this mission to be like see women can be really evil too and like you judge this man unfairly it, it, it's almost it, it's felt built into the dna of this movie this kind of like really intentional almost angry streak to it but there's like this kind of gentleness to her death here. It doesn't feel like she's being punished. A lot of it is in the performance, but the way it lingers and the way it holds, I agree with what Red Letter Media said when they said that her death feels like when you've been watching a movie about like a killer bear or a killer shark, and when they start finally killing the creature, you start to feel a little bad because it doesn't know any better. And I think that is what this scene achieved. To me, it made her feel like, yeah, she had no control over her trauma responses. She wasn't mentally well. She mentioned that she sees demons earlier in the movie. And it feels like she's weirdly acting purely on impulse and these sort of like distorted survival instincts because she sees men and the world around her as inherently dangerous and predatory. Now, yes, she does coach these men into these situations. Yes, she does carve her initials onto men's bodies like she is not innocent by any means do not get it twisted but yeah i just found the the level of empathy that the film managed to draw out here and the way she's almost looking at the woman that shot her in like bewilderment like oh my god you did that like you pulled that off and it almost starts to feel like a level of like respect like she's almost glad that she was shot by this woman or like admires this woman for getting the jump on her. It's also really interesting in this scene because we know that she has at least one or two extra guns and at multiple points, it feels like she's going to reach for them to kill this woman, but instead she's kind of just holding her wound and bleeding out. One of the most interesting discussions earlier in the movie is when our main character actually talks about the fact that she would rather... Um, go to jail for life and constantly try and figure out a way out of the jail cell rather than die, which I think most people would rather die. I don't know if this is like a hot take, but I feel like most people would rather get the death penalty than spend life in jail. I feel like that's a very common thing, especially with serial killers. Often serial killers say, just give me the chair, just give me the firing squad. I don't, I don't want to spend time in jail. So it's really interesting to hear our main character say she would rather you know, spend this time in jail. And because she says she always wants to fight, she'll always figure out another way. And in this closing scene, she has another way out, sort of, right? It feels very in her nature to then take the other gun or just keep fighting this woman. But it feels like being shot by this woman that she almost now has this admiration and respect for, it sets in that maybe this is the best thing for her. You know, maybe her existence in this perpetual nightmare of feeling like she's constantly in danger and creating these dangerous situations and putting herself in these dangerous situations because of how she sees the world around her, it feels like this death of hers is almost a blessing in disguise. And I, I weirdly think that there's an interesting message here about how you know, if, if, if you are raised and rightfully so to believe that a lot of men, if not all men, are an intrinsic and dangerous threat to you, that like that is a crushing 
existence. That is an awful existence. And yes, she is an awful person. She is a serial killer. Do not get it twisted. But I think the depth of her character and what I pulled from it was this idea of it's like an extension of this idea, right? It's what happens if someone who, you know, always, you know, check their back when they walked home or always walked with keys sticking out of their knuckles in case someone, you know, grabbed them and assaulted them eventually just cracked and committed to the idea that every man is inherently dangerous. And, you know, what would that existence look like? How torturous would that be to always be on the run? Because you just can't have normal relationships without feeling like they will always get to this point. And yeah, I think the ending and the way it holds on her and, and just this like heartbreaking writhing as she's bleeding to death was like really well done and really brought the film up for me and almost, almost redeemed that cop scene earlier. And the reason I say that is because to me, it felt like the last scene was actually giving her a lot of empathy and understanding without saying too much. Whereas that earlier scene with the cops did feel like, hey, maybe the messaging is getting a bit weird in this movie, but I think I can forgive it and just say, you know what, it's two cops disagreeing on how they should handle something and it's played for laughs given how the film ends. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Please check out the movie and have a lovely day.